Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, the insane Darrell Wayne, twiddling the knobs and pulling the sliders up and down. We used to call those pots. Are they still called pots? Faders. Faders. Now they're faders. They used to be pots, don't it? Potentiometers. That is about as technical as I ever get. Uh, our guest this next uh, segment of the show is Coach Derek Locklear. Fifteen years ago, with five kids, he started uh, serving inner-city kids in the L.A. area. Today, he reaches over a 1,000 kids a week. Coach Derek, thank you for helping, and thank you for being on Late Night Health. Mark, I appreciate it, and, um, and yeah, definitely. Thank you for the opportunity. How did you come up with the idea of working with kids? Is it something you always wanted to do? No, um, no, not at all. My uh, my dream was to uh, to be the next starting shortstop for the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles, um, and uh, the universe had other plans. So as baseball was um, slowly um, leaving my life, um, the opportunity to do some part time work at the local YMCA over 26 years ago um, came up and and I started working with kids and realized that um, I had a lot of natural God-given gifts um, to uh, connect, motivate, and teach and I've uh, been running with it ever since. How much is your mental attitude, your spirituality, how much of that makes Coach Derek Coach Derek to, to help others yeah mark that's a great question and I, I i tell you over the years um i have learned that you really can't help anyone unless you love yourself and there have been times in my life where um you know i wasn't able to love myself and um so i, I would seek out opportunities to serve and, and help others to feel good and the the results weren't always um, as um, as a as positive as they could be or they could have been. Um, and then you know, after um, doing a lot of work um, on myself, um, both personally as, as as well as spiritually, um, I was able to, to change my perspective and how I see myself and how I love myself. And and what that does is is put me in a much better position. And, and in a much better place to to really help, um, in my case, children in an authentic way, so that um, I'm not looking to get anything back. It, it is an absolute free gift. Um, therefore, I, I don't need anything from them. I'm, I'm just showing up for them. That would work with adults too. It would seem to me. That's a great. I, I tell you, <laughs> you're you're right, Mark. Um, you know, again, I, I, I can look back in, in relationships, um, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, friends, family, intimate relationships. Um, you know, if you don't show up um, in a place where, you know, you're able to love yourself, um, it, it, it's really hard to love others. Absolutely. Uh, in our first hour, we were talking uh, with Robert Clancy, whose basic message is that love heals everything. And we talked to a, a breast cancer survivor who said, love is what got me through it from my family. And wow. we, and now we're ending our show with you saying, love is it. Love is the... Th- that, <laughs> right? That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, at the end of the day, right, Mark? If, um, if, uh, if, if I don't have that, especially with children, too, you know, I mean, they... They can sense and they can pick up um, if you're just trying to fake it to make it, um, or or if if you're being authentic. And um, and, th- and that's the one thing that I love. Um, well, there's a couple things I love with when it when it comes to working with children. One is they can see right through you, um, and if you're willing to look with them, and if you're willing <laughs> to change, right? If you're willing to change, um, good things can happen. And two is um, how much I'm able to learn um, from them. It's, uh, but yeah, man. Well, I, then you really are do. getting something from them. I guess so, right? I'm, right. I'm getting more of a uh, self awareness, and I'm being reminded on a, on a on a constant basis that it's okay to say things like "I don't know." Um, it's always okay to say, um, 
can you repeat that just so I'm clear? And I can look back in a lot of situations in my life where I just wish I would have said, I don't know, or could you repeat that? Because that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> Got it. Uh, uh, do you miss baseball? Do you miss playing? Or do you play with the, ki- the, the, the kids? You know, uh, I did for a long time. I, I, you know, I was able to play some, some ball in college, and again, I hung on to that dream um, for about 20 20- well, until I was about 22, 23 years of age. And um, there were some years um, where I struggled personally with my own identity, um, having not um, been able to play baseball. Um, so I, I missed it. Um, I wasn't really sure who I was without it. Um, and that's where the universe, it, it, it was amazing how, again, one thing was being taken away, but then there was another one that was, that was that was being presented to me, and um, one door you know, opens, one, one door closes, and another opens. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That is the story of my life, as it is, I'm sure, um, most everyone else. But, do you, Do uh, you have kids of your own? I don't. I don't. Um, well, actually, you they, do. You have a thousand a week. Well, <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a lot of children. I am. I've. I've been blessed and um and lucky enough to work with a lot of children over the years. So, um, I definitely get my kid fixed there for sure. When when you're in the market and somebody comes over to you, have you had and says, "Hey, coach, do you remember me? I was, you know, with you 15 years ago. Today, I'm a lawyer." Mm-hmm. Does that <laughs> kind of thing happen? All the time. Um, it happens all the time, and um. And what a wonderful feeling. What a wonderful feeling. Now, um, See, my girlfriend you, okay. um, wishes there was a little bit of uh, anonymity, but uh, it happens a lot. And and again, you're getting something back from that. Yeah, it, it, is, a, um, it, is, it is a really good feeling to know that you have impacted someone um, in, in, a, in a positive way, that, uh, that you're remembered. You know, I, I'm not going to lie to you, that, that, that definitely does strength the ego um a lot and there's nothing like wrong with that i would love <laughs> to get hold of some of my high school teachers and, and thank them uh daryl has a question not really a question just a comment uh, before the coach's time but there used to be a guy in television many years ago by the name of art Linkletter, and uh, he mm. used to oh, do yeah. a, a program where he talked to kids uh, all the time kids say the darndest things Yes, and yes. they did a um, a show where they were paying tribute to Art Linkletter, and they said, "Are there any questions from the audience?" And one uh, gentleman stood up and said, "Matter of fact, I was one of the kids uh, on your show." Wow! Uh, and uh, he said that he was grown; he was in his forties, probably forty, forty-five. And the MC said, "Are there any other kids in the audience that were on his show?" Everyone stood up. No, <laughs> everyone in the auditorium stood up. Wow. Oh, that gives me goosebumps. Me too. Wow, wow. that's amazing. So you really don't realize, you know, how many lives you touch and, and, and what happens as a result. Steve Harvey's, I understand, is coming back with that next year, with that yeah. show. Yeah, yes. And he's done so. already done some kind of goofy stuff along that line. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he is the hottest thing right now. Lynn Farley has a question for you. Or a Hi. Statement. Hi. You sound like a life coach, but uh, you have a baseball background. I grew up with a coach. Uh, my father, Rusty Fairley, was the brother of Ron Fairley, who played first base with the Dodgers for years and years wow. and years. And growing up with a coach uh, n- it was very different uh, than, I think, growing up from maybe, I don't know, a dad who was a lawyer, for example. And uh, the things he taught us just naturally as a father was uh, had a lot to do with sportsmanship. Do you teach sportsmanship to your kids and why are you called a coach? Is it because you're a life coach, or how do you get? <laughs> yeah, or baseball. Or baseball. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, I, I tell you, I um, yeah. My my biggest thing is I, I I teach children how to play sport, and I started at, as young as two and and go all the way up until about twelve to, to thirteen years of age. Um, so that's where the coach comes from. Um, but as as far as sportsmanship, absolutely. Um, you know, teaching children um, not to get too high with the wins so that <laughs> they don't have to get too low with the losses. Um, teaching children that it's it's not about um, the end of the game 
and the scoreboard, but it's how you're able to compete within yourself. Um, because I think those things are going to translate much, much longer and, um, and, and, and much deeper, um, into their lives. Um, because, you know, um, it's, it's a very small number that will continue to play in high school. There's a very even smaller number that'll play in college and even smaller number that's going to play post college. So these life lessons, um, are the things that, uh, that matter to me the most. Um, if, if I if I could do anything to impact a child, it is to is to learn that competition is not a bad thing, um, but what you do with it means everything. And the um, la- by the way, the last time that that uh, I followed the Dodgers, Ron was still playing. How about that? I just wanted <laughs> w- wanted you to know that he's never been out of baseball. No, no, never. No. Thank you. I love that answer. And so that That's does, fantastic. in an interesting way, make you a life coach, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess so, right? I mean, even in my, you know, my motto is, um, you know, field, field, uh, life lessons and, and inspiring field lessons. So, um, we, we do, it, that stuff matters. And if it matters to me, therefore it matters to my staff, um, that, uh, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't cut any corners. We don't cut any corners to win. And, um, and we don't blame anyone when we lose. Um, and that's, uh, you know, we just try to be better next time. And and then there's that right there's the, to know that there's a, there's going to be a next time, um, and it's not the end of the world. Um, therefore, you know there's no big deals. That, that's another thing that we we say all the time um, that these are no big deals. Um, you know you can turn on the news um, any in, at any point of any day, and and you can listen to and watch a lot of much bigger deals um, than what we're doing. So. With with all the kids <clears throat> that you see. And I'm assuming your staff as well see a thousand kids a week. Are there any that, you know, are like the proverbial horse to water? You can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink. Are there kids who are a little bit more challenged, and how do you work with them? Well, that's a very good question. Um, you know, the short answer is yes. There's, there's a lot of challenges that the, the children face. And, um, and, and I tell you, Mark, the, the, the one thing that I've realized, having done a lot of work on the, the west side of Los Angeles, where uh, resources are, are unlimited, um, and the east side of Los Angeles, where um, there's not a lot of resources, is the one thing that they, they tend to have in common is um, the lack of fathers in their lives. You know, the, uh, the, the, the wealthy folks on the west side, they, you know, their father's busy. Um, you know, creating that lifestyle. And then, of course, on the east side, um, and they're not available for, 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 you know, for much different reasons. Right. So, our our job. Uh, I'm going to le- hold on a second. I'm okay. going to I'm going to uh, stop you there. We're going to take a timeout, and okay. we're going to talk about the mission, if you will, the job okay. of Coach Derek. Inc. Uh, I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne, Lynn Farley, joining us as well. Don't go away. More coming up. Join us at LateNightHealth.com and Facebook.com slash LateNightHealthRadio. Like us there, and I promise we'll like you back. How's that? Uh, More coming up as Late Night Health moves forward. Welcome to Guide to the Soul. This is Robert Clancy. When your life's problems seem to rise and fall like the waves on a stormy ocean, let hope become your life raft and faith become your paddle. Every sea touches a calm shoreline somewhere in the world, and eventually this storm that you're going through will pass too. Never allow negative circumstances to define you. Whatever happens to you in life may be faded and it certainly can't be changed after the fact. What you can change is how you feel about it and how you're going to let it affect you. Today is a brand new day, and as with any gift, share it with love and gratitude. For more inspiration from Robert Clancy, visit GuideToTheSoul.com or go to the Moments with Robert page on LateNightHelp.com.
Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The tax doctor is here to help you negotiate a lower tax bill. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts. But you can stop these IRS actions. The tax doctor will fight for you using industry secrets that can stop any IRS actions, eliminate penalties, penalties and interest, and reduce your past tax bill so you pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call the tax doctor now for a free IRS audit emergency review. 800-663-5107. 800-663-5107. 800-663-5107. That's 800-663-5107.